In this section here, it's asking you to model using the symbols that are down below. Um, you can delete this and then um, you can do this a couple ways. You can print this out um, or you can um, copy and paste the symbols from over in the left. Um, there's by control C and then going over here and control pasting it and then you can move them around where you need them. Um, whichever one's easier um, doesn't matter but um, what you're going to do is you can't the idea of conservation of mass is if you started with HCl, Ag, and NO3 you can't get anything new on the product side they just have to be rearranged so here's some possibilities H could go with Ag you could have H go with the NO3 um, and you could have um, all of them go together, HCl, um, Ag, and O3. You could have them all separated out, um, but those are all the possible combinations. But we have some experimental evidence that can help support um, uh, which one is the correct answer. So in this case down here, you're going to explain how you got your formula. Well two things I want you to look at when you look back at your data here's the reaction of A3 which is silver nitrate with hydrochloric acid notice the cloudy white here's the reaction again with silver nitrate but not with the hydrochloric acid but copper chloride it's also cloudy it's just not white the leftover blue is probably because of the copper still in solution and then the, the white is, um, it's, it just looks blue, but they had the similar reaction where a cloudy substance appeared, and then if you got rid of, rid of the blue substance, um, the blue liquid, which is the copper, then you would have um, the same white substance. The only way that they could have both produced the same white substance is if what um, you have to look at what's in common between hydrochloric acid and copper chloride they both have the chloride ion so something with the chloride ion was produced on this side um, so over here you can put the chloride ion and then this is what produced the solid um, and you can decide what hooked up with the chloride and it can either be, um, you know it's probably not the H because that's a clear solution, um, but it could be either be the silver or the nitrate. And um, here's a hint, silver is positive, nitrate's negative, chloride's negative. So what's gonna hook up with this negative charge? Now this made the solid, and then over here you draw and show um, what made what's left over because of conservation of mass and then explain your logic of how you got that. Now for this next one um, with comparing aluminum foil and aluminum shot you're going to take your observations um, and uh, with copper chloride and aluminum shot and aluminum foil. Well when you look back at the reaction um, aluminum shot and aluminum foil both had um, the brown substance appear on both of them. Um, the background solution both got clearer on both of them. The blue went away I should say. And then um, the litmus paper didn't change. The aluminum foil usually increases in temperature a little bit faster. Um, so it looks like the similar reactions happening except for the aluminum foil is reacting faster. Well, it's asking you to explain why in the final sentence um, and use lighting a piece of paper versus a log. So if you had um, paper and um, a bunch of paper, let's say, that weighed as much as a log but was all crumpled up and you had a log over there and they both weighed, let's say, one kilogram and you lit both piles, the pile of this crumpled up paper and the log, the crumpled up paper would burn significantly faster. Well, they're both made out of the same material. So why would it burn faster? The reason is, is because there's more surface area 
um, for the, the paper and also in the case of the aluminum foil that's exposed to more collisions of molecules. In the case of paper, it's the collisions of uh, oxygen molecules and the exposure to heat. But in the case of the aluminum foil, it's how much of the aluminum is exposed to the copper in solution. And that means that you have an increased rate of reaction. So the same reaction is happening in both, but it's faster in the aluminum foil because there's more surface area. Now, in this section, identifying acids and bases using litmus paper, um, anything that's pink is acidic. Anything that's blue is basic. And so you use that logic to explain what happens to acids and bases. Well, we started out with hydrochloric acid in the top. And if we go back to the original solutions, our reactions, um, you can look at them. This one has several errors on it, so I'm going to go to another one. Um, this one actually is pretty close to one of the best ones I've seen for litmus paper. Um, it's it's might be ambiguous in some of these, but they did a good job in this first and second one of uh, following directions, um, and both of these turn blue. The reason is is because sodium hydroxide is a base and it reacts with the hydrochloric acid and sodium bicarbonate in the second one reacts with the acid also. If you add enough of the sodium bicarbonate eventually it will react with all the acid and the litmus paper turns blue. But a lot of people did not add enough um, right down here add enough of the sodium bicarbonate. For example in this one um, they just added a little bit of the sodium bicarbonate, but didn't continue adding it until it was all done reacting. Therefore, it was still acidic. So use the color um, change of the litmus paper to determine which chemicals were acidic and which chemicals were basic. Um, then the last one. Final um, paragraph state the definition of conservation of mass. Well, conservation of mass is that mass cannot be created or destroyed. It only gets rearranged. That's This example in part C um, really illustrates it. Remember part C, if you go back up to the top, is when we put a test tube um, inside of a closed Erlenmeyer flask, put a cork on it, weighed it, and the test tube had silver nitrate and the bottom had copper chloride. Well, when we tipped it over, yes, a new solid was made, a new material was made, but it wasn't just produced out of thin air. It was made by rearrangement of atoms. And since nothing came in through the cork and nothing left, your mass change is going to be zero, or some people have a small mass change. It's usually because um, they have a, a wet Erlenmeyer flask, and when they set the Erlenmeyer flask down, it some drops of water come off of it or they have a leaky cork. Um, but if you have less than 0.1 grams, um, that's not a very significant change in mass. So that helps support the idea that mass is neither created or destroyed, it's only rearranged.